Three remaining World War II veterans who served in the 86th Fighter Bomber Group visited the Bob Hope Village as part of their 38th reunion today. So we had three, three uh, World War II 86 Fighter Group veterans here today with us. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them over the years have passed away, and so their group, their reunion, has been going on for 38 years, but uh, uh, this is their 38th year, and they have three of them that were able to join us, but it was special to have them here, but it was also special to have their extended families here. So their children, their grandchildren, were a lot of them joined us today to, to share this reunion with them every year. The 86 Fighter Bomber Group supported ground forces in the Mediterranean theater in World War II, participating in the invasion of Sicily in the summer of 1942 and assisting with the Allied forces during their invasion of Rome in southern France a year later. Bill Colgan is a 96-year-old veteran of the 86 Fighter Group. I tell you, it, uh, I talked to a little bit, so to just a bit of fool. <laughs> it took most everybody in the United States to do what they did in that war. In that war. For, uh, he was in the Mediterranean theater during World War II. He enlisted the day after Pearl Harbor. Um, he flew combat missions uh, in Europe, Spain. Uh, they started in North Africa and in France. Uh, flew all the way to the end of the war and uh, stayed until the occupation was complete. After lunch, the vets went on a tour of Bob Hope Village, whose namesake was the famous comedian and television personality who also happened to be an avid military supporter. Here's footage of the bus tour. Stay safe too, so I got to see. Okay, so as as we go out today, we're going to take a right. Uh, if you if you go around the perimeter road on the interior, it's a mile loop. So we actually do a mile race every year with the little kids that run around the campus and the residents out. We're kind of high five them when they're going around the race. And so, but it's a mile loop. It's actually a mile. So we'll go around it, and the mile loop goes around the original four villages. So we're going to go around the original four villages, and then we'll finish up on the other side with Village 5, which is the newest village, and then the assisted living will be the last building we see. Uh, on the left here, this is just the headquarters facility, standard, uh, standard type setup. There's about 100 people on staff here. For 500 residents, we have about 100, 100 people on staff. The vast majority of the staff works in the assisted living facility. And you can imagine why, because there's 24-hour care, nursing, food services. Um, so about 65 of the 100 people work in the one building, which is to take care of those, those 67 residents that we have living in there. So off on the left over here, it's interesting, people always ask me about this. Well, why do you build a playground in a senior community? Uh, well, because the seniors have great-grandchildren, but they come out here, and honestly, the great-grandchildren don't like to hang out in the assisted yes, living. Right. I don't know why. Uh, they don't want to hang out there. So we had a group come out there, and if you look at the parachute over there, they came out there and they built this. And it was one of the Battlefield Airmen groups from over at Herbert Field where you're at this morning. They come out here and they build a park. We get a lot of support, about 1,000 volunteers a year from the local military bases. Um, and what we like about that, first off, it's a great interaction between the residents who are in their 80s, 90s, and 100s with airmen that are wearing uniform. Um, because if you think about it, some of these uh, residents um, have been widows for almost 40 years. And so when they see somebody in uniform, it takes them back to when their husband wore a uniform. And so we'll have events out here where we'll do a formal, formal ball with a dance and we'll bring out the guys in their dress uniforms cool. to dance with them. Uh, because you saw the demographics, there's a lot more widows than, than uh, widowers here. So, so we're going around the campus on the inside. These are the original four villages, um, 256 apartments within each one of these. Each one has their own little garden plot out front of it. Um, the volunteers will come over there and help them weed their gardens and do stuff. Uh, a lot of the landscaping, that uh, if they need help like that, they'll come over and help. Um, these were the original villages that were built because of the efforts of Bob Hope. So when Bob Hope came out here, the, the about a million dollars back in the early 80s to, to build these, these first four villages. And so that was because of all those fundraisers that Bob Hope did it. Um, so all these units out here, and what's interesting about the, um, we started a new concept that's really taken off is local businesses, local military units will come out and they do what's called an adopter wing. So each of the wings you can see on the X, each of them has 16 widows in there, and they'll come out and the unit will say, well, I want to adopt that wing. We'll put their name on the outside of it. They come out two or three times a month with four to five volunteers, and they just go up to the residents saying, what do you need done? Well, I need some ironing. I need some to vacuum my apartment. I need to do stuff that they can't do themselves. And they'll, they'll volunteer out there. But the interesting thing about the volunteering is um, what the residents really want you to do is just sit down and talk to them. 
And so they'll come out here. My first experience was about 20 years ago. I started doing the honeydew or the adopt a wing type projects. And I come out there and I do a couple things. And I said, well, what else do you need, ma'am? She goes, nothing, just have a seat. I've got so I made some cake and cookies and you'd sit there and talk to them. And an hour and a half later, you're done. <laughs> uh, but if you think about it, since there's so many widows here, they're all by themselves in their apartments. So we want to, we love the volunteers to come out here just to spend time with them and talk to them. Uh, and the residents will tell you that uh, we just don't want to be forgotten. So they're at that age where they, they think they may be passing, and so they want somebody to know their story, what they went through. And so over here on the, as we're going around, this is a, the community center that we're going to see. Actually, I'm, I'm a little bit early here. We'll go around the, the, the uh, corner of this last village here. Um, the blue signs that are right at the end of the village, you can keep going. It, it's a one-mile loop. The blue sign here uh, on the end of the facility, I think this one's for the Boeing wing. Back in the 80s when the defense contractors um, and the military was probably twice the size it is now, the defense contractors had a lot of money that they wanted to reinvest into philanthropic needs. So Boeing came out um, and, and donated $750,000 to help keep this place up. And so you'll see a lot of these buildings have Boeing or Lockheed Martin or different type of defense contractors on them. And the defense contractors love the fact that these are all military widows. Yeah. And so they come out here and they want to support them. All right. so. Do Hughes get involved at all? What's that? Hughes? Howard Hughes, Hughes. Howard Hughes any of that? No. no I wish, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, uh, he was acting kind of funny in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just thinking about the people that work for him. Was that some type of uh, community garden we passed? Yeah, yeah there is. Uh, the community garden there, they, they have a plot of area that's set up for garden. Rockwell, yeah, Rockwell. I don't